Yeah, you know, it's interesting. This market has such low liquidity that when we decide to react and, and likely overreact to any of the inputs that we've seen, we get these massive moves, both to the upside and to the downside. I think today's another example of that. So I don't think that uh, Jeremy is wrong in saying that uh, we need to think about PEs, but I would argue that if you look at the S&P 500, the multiple contraction that we've already done so far this year, and, and, uh, and you take out the top five names that are all trading somewhere between 24 and 28 times, the, the multiple in the S&P going forward right now is, is about 15 and a half or 16. So to the extent that the multiple contraction in times of inflation or in rising rates makes sense, I just don't think it's as draconian likely as Mr. Uh, uh, Grantham is, is making it out to be. I don't think this is a long-term distortion. I think we're figuring out how we, we get back out and about after a pandemic. And I think a lot of those things are playing into what we've heard in terms of the inputs this week. And to your point, we've seen this massive reset already in valuations in the S&P, like you said, was it, I think, 19 times and has fallen. Uh, if you strip out those names, 15 and a half, you leave them in, maybe we're around 17. So I guess, does that mean, though, that we're at risk of getting stuck here for some time? Yeah, I think that's dependent on, on if the natural course of events away from what we do in monetary policy actually brings inflation down. So if we've actually seen a peak in inflation, which we likely did in March, and we see sequential improvement over the course of the second quarter and the second half, and the Fed you know, gets to that terminal rate, whether it's 25 or 3% on the Fed funds rate, can we still generate the kind of uh, um, above mean or mean GDP growth rates? And I think that's our base case. I think this year and next we'll likely have um, above mean GDP growth rates this year and probably mean GDP growth rates next year. And I think that's sort of the, you know, kind of run, the, the, the natural inclination to run around like your hair's on fire because Walmart had some operational issues and got more inventory than they needed and you know, targeted to. And, and I just think we need to kind of stick to our knitting and remember that the consumer is actually still pretty strong. It's just a function of what they're consuming. They've gone from consuming. From consuming uh, goods to services, is that right? Yeah, goods to services. And I think that is what you know got uh, both Walmart and Target you know, kind of stuck in the wrong footed when they finally got inventory. So I think that this is gonna take some adjustments. This is gonna be a bumpy road, but I certainly don't think it's quite as, um, you know, the sky is falling as, as some would like to have it. Although we have seen Art a number of people marking down their year end forecast now, we're almost halfway through the year. We're at 3,900 on the S&P. Do you still think 5,000 is achievable? Yeah, it's funny. People are marking down the, their year end uh, forecast at the very same time, earnings for the S&P 500 estimates are going higher. So that's the dynamic. It's what's the appropriate multiple for that year end earnings number that likely will be closer to 240 than it is to 230. And, you know, even if you were to put a, a 19 multiple on that, that's more up 15% from where we are now. So I think that there's the potential, and that would be a trailing multiple. So I think there's a potential that people are just getting to this place where we have both peak inflation and peak panic. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.